reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday comes from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We have been reflecting on the responsibility of the people Israel from the prophet Malachi and its leaders to be faithful to God of the covenant so that they could instruct all the nations about God, His name, and to lead them to glorify God instructing people so that they would get to know God. But somehow Israel failed in that mission. But we have a, some sort of a redemption story, a redeeming story in the second reading. We find St. Paul, the model instructor, the model apostle, clear about his mission. He tells the Thessalonians, that he would have given his life for them. His whole life will be devoted to them. And what did he bring to the Thessalonians? Not his word, not his name, not anything about himself. What St. Paul brought to the Thessalonians was the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus whom he preaches, not himself. It is not his own words that he conveys. It is the word of God, the gospel, the good news that only God in his grace and mercy could communicate to others. And St. Paul is very clear about his mission. He knows that he was called by God to be an apostle to the Gentiles, to be the bearer of good news, to be the instructor, the teacher of those who do not belong to the chosen people of God. He was clear about that. If we use another terminology, St. Paul was a person of a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. And this clear relationship with Jesus, his covenant with Jesus, made him the servant of Jesus. He will preach Jesus and nobody else, not himself. That's why he also thanked the Thessalonians. Because the Thessalonians received the gospel not as human word, not as the word of Paul, not as the word of someone who simply wanted to share his own ideas or his own inventions. No, St. Paul was very happy. He was very glad that the Thessalonians accepted his teaching for what it truly is, the Word of God, working in the power of the Spirit. So here we have a double reason to rejoice. We have St. Paul, in a way, reversing what we heard in Malachi. St. Paul being true to the covenant with God, being true to his mission, leading others not to himself, but to Jesus. Because it was the word of Jesus that he shared with the Thessalonians. But we also rejoice 
at the grace received by the Thessalonians. They did not uh, become enamored of St. Paul. They did not simply admire the wisdom of St. Paul. They were not in a way attached to the talent of St. Paul. They saw that the words of St. Paul were really spirit and power coming from God. So I am appealing to our instructors, our teachers, especially teachers of the faith, including myself, let us not draw people to ourselves, but to the good news of Jesus. And I appeal also to you who listen to us. Sometimes you run after us and you forget the true gospel. It is not our human wisdom, but it is the word of God in its power and its spirit.